right. of her neshama and to give her neshama strength wherever it is. Uh, we're going to just study Psalm 23, which if you're looking for a psalm to recite, by the way, and now this class, if you're going to do Shmira, boy, do you have a good, you could be, when you study the psalms, you could take out, if you have altar, you could read the commentary, you could read the psalms, or you could just open up the book of psalms and read it through. That's traditionally done by a psalm, a shomer, the some person who sits, who does this guarding, usually starts at Psalm 1 and just reads through to 150 and then starts over again. So, but since we're CBST, of course, we expand what Shmira can mean. And you could also read poetry that you love. Or if you thought she would love to, you know, hear the, so the uh, soundtrack to Fiddler on the Roof, you could sing to her. The idea is to dedicate these shifts. I think you understand, right? Everybody? Yes. Any so, questions about those things? Or Harold, did you want to say something? No, Sorry. I was just going to say that Kendra Nimi is ready to sing us in with Psalm 23. OK. Great. And shall you put up the words? So we I have it. Yes, hold on. All right, Kendra Nimi. Um, I'm, I'm, if I get a little bit for Clem, just forgive me. Um, I have a lot of fo fond memories of conversations with Devorah as well. Um, so at some point I can, I can tell you all about what this particular melody means to me, but for now I just want to offer it to, to honor uh, Devorah. Uh -huh. Mismo le David, Adonai roi lo exar, inod de she arbitzeni, al me menuchot, Al mei menuchot yenach aleini. Nafshi yeshovev yeshovev. Yancheni b'mag leitzedek. Yancheni b'maglet sedek leman shemo. Gam ki enech begeitz al mavet lo irana ki ata imadi. Shivtecha umishantecha hema yenacha muni. Taruch lefanai, lefanai. Shulchan neged tzorerai. Dishan ta vashem en roshi. Kosi revaya. Ach tov vachesed. Yir de funi, kol yemei chayai, kol yemei chayai. Veshavti bevet Adonai leo. Adonai roi lo exar 
Adonai roi lo exad. That's just spectacular. Who wrote that setting? Cantor Gerald Cohen. Um, um, I took a composition class, and um, at some point I'll tell you more about. He told me the uh, story about how he wrote that melody, but um, he wrote it for a deer. Yeah, would you share that story now? He wrote it in, in um, 1989 um, when a, a congregant and dear friend of his had passed away. Uh. Um, and it started out as a, as a acapella melody that he sang at the funeral. Um, and it's become one of his best known pieces. Yeah. It's had arrangements made with orchestra and choir and- We've done it at CBST. I'm definitely familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, he's a New, he's a, a New York based, um, uh, I think he, he works in the conservative movement, but he's a brilliant composer um, and dear friend. Hmm. Thank you for that, just spectacular. Excuse me, it's Naomi Hirsch and I put a lot of information including his website in the chat and oh, you can good. read the story of the composition. He's a dear friend of mine. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for putting Beautiful. that in there. Um, oh, wonderful. It was written in 1999. So as I said, so we're going to dedicate our study today to Devora and to the merits of her neshama. And of course, uh, we will get to Psalm 23 in not so long. I guess another six months, Harold, do you think? <laughs> Never know. But it is, of course, maybe the most famous psalm. Uh, it's hard to, you know, one doesn't like to, I don't like to, you know, they're all my favorite children, right? Uh, and as you could tell from our study of the psalms, many of the ones that aren't so well known are spectacular and beautiful and have great depth to them and are deep. And I hope that's one of the things you're going to get from our studying together. It's not only the famous ones. Um, but there's a reason that some of them, the famous ones, are the famous ones as well. Um, but I think one, I appreciate the greatest hits more when they're in the body of work rather than just lifted out. So I think you'll even have a deeper appreciation of them. So today we're going to do a one-day study of Psalm 23, which is, of course, very different than our normal style of going so deeply into it. Um, but we will, I hope it will uh enrich comfort bring you some bring you some food of comfort in these in this day of and i know so many people are shocked and carrying the news with uh you know with a sense of shock so first of all so let's look at the hebrew up on the screen and we heard Cantor nimi sing it so since we're so late right now i'm not going to read it again but if we could look at it. Now, this is the CBST Sidur, and we're not studying today, but we will with, um, with uh, Marsha and Rabbi Cohen might even join us to talk about the creation of the Sidur. So a few things that we could point out about this. We didn't number the verses of Psalms because we didn't want it to seem academic. We made a lot of choices. It is on page 180. 180 of your, of your C. If you have the CBST Friday Night Sidur, we're looking at 180 and 181. So a few things about the Sidur, since we're, um, since we're still Psalms 23. And, um, so we didn't number the verses. And our goal was always to create a book of liturgy, of prayer, which has different uh, instructed us or pushed us to make some different decisions than were we only doing a Hebrew textbook or a book of Psalms. So the English we struggled with all the time with Yehuda, and sometimes uh, he didn't do the translations, to try and make sure we were doing translations that in themselves could be prayer, that we wanted to remove the things, even though they might have been more accurate to a Hebrew translation, we wanted to remove things that would be obstacles to an English speaker only, an English only speaker or reader to experiencing the beauty of the psalm. Like we've seen some of our more dramatic translations, their job is to find what is the deeper meaning, not what's the exact word translation. So you can do that best if you can translate the Hebrew very, very well. 
So uh, as Yehuda could and I could and Rabbi Cohen could. So we had lots of discussions about how to maintain that. But first of all, um, all of the pages of the CBSTC door have up on the upper right corner where you're looking at the Hebrew on top of this page. In Hebrew, we would write what the section of the Sidur is. So it says here, Tehillim Bashirim, Psalms and Songs. And this is a section where we put into the Sidur and when Marcia and I go over the big rubric for the Sidur, we'll explain that even more. But if, Harold, if you could go to the English page. So that right-hand page matches on the top, we wrote what the section was. So on every page of the CBST Sidur, you see in the Hebrew and in the English, a guide of what it is. So, first of all, how many verses are in Psalm 23? Maybe the most famous piece, the most famous Psalm for Christians and Jews. I mean, can you imagine? How long is this Psalm? Now we I'm don't have the numbers here. Six, yeah, El is correct. There are six lines. So first of all, think about that. It's a little bit like the Getty, Gettysburg Address, which is, I've forgotten how long that is, but it is so brief. The first thing is to appreciate this Psalm is its intense brevity and the power of this Psalm for the last, you know, let's say it was written 2,500 years ago is breathtaking to me that it does, it accomplishes what it does in so few words. Um, which is somebody who doesn't do that very often, it makes me awestruck. So let's go back to the Hebrew and I'm gonna work through the, by the way, the other thing about the CBST Sidur, every, the rough layout is that the Hebrew is on the right-hand side where the Hebrew would begin. If there's transliteration, it's immediately below the Hebrew. And on the facing page is the English with the closest translation. When we have interpretive readings, they follow this, this particular initial rubric. Hebrew, transliteration, fairly close English translation, and then we have interpretive or other poems based on the themes. So let's start. Let's just, I'm going to just talk us through the psalm in the short time that we have. First of all, Mizmor le David, we see, we, we bolded in the, the words in every prayer that the prayer is usually known. See, in Jewish prayer, we don't usually say, the prayer found on page blah, blah. Jews would pray so often that all you would have to do is say, Avat Olam, you found it. You didn't have a need to worry about what the page number was. And that's why Avat Olam is bolded. Mizmor le David is the name for this prayer in Hebrew, which is interesting, right? The 23rd Psalm is called Mizmor le David, even though there are other, Mizmor is a song, le David of David's, and we've, this is the superscription. It's also just known as Mizmor le David. If you refer to it, if Cantor Nimi or Cantor Hirsch is talk, they're talking to each other and they're talking about settings, they'll say the setting for Mizmor le David. This is just the way we, that's the way it's known, like, unless we say Psalm 23 in English. So this is the transliterate, this is the superscription. Uh, and we've talked a lot about superscription. So I'm not gonna focus on that here. So the first line is really these four words. Yud Hey Vav Hey. So we know from our study that that's the powerful name of Hashem. Yud Hey Vav Hey. Starting with Yud Hey Vav Hey. Again, biblical Hebrew classically traditionally starts with a verb. If it doesn't start with a verb, there's some emphasis. So the emphasis here is Yud Hey Vav Hey. Bold, you know, I would say in kind of jumbotron neon letters. Yud hey vav hey ro e. A ro e, interestingly, is what? Yeah, do we have Ben or Yael here? What would you say a ro e is? It's a shepherd. But the way I pronounced it with my American accent, what's the other word for it? What else does it mean? Well, it's a different, uh, it's written differently. You say ro e with an aleph, it's yes. somebody who sees. Exactly. But and with the I, it means a shepherd. Exactly. Right. So, so the commentators talk a lot about this. With an I in, the word for shepherd is a shepherd. I mean, is a shepherd. But with an aleph, it's a seer, a visionary, somebody who sees. 
So people make comments that the ro'i, God is my shepherd, God is also the one who sees me. It's a very interesting, and again, does it etymologically, it's not true, right? But we've talked about Hebrew plays sometimes with words that look alike or sound alike. And the same thing in Lecha Dodi, which we don't have time to look at. There's words that have ayin and words that have aleph. Sometimes there's a playfulness about what, even though the ayin would be pronounced differently than I or Yael pronounces it today, um, it's still seen as a, so yud heh vav roi is my shepherd. Wow, that is initial statement. What is a shepherd? So you have to think about what's the image of a shepherd. When you think biblically, what does a shepherd do? Who is a shepherd? First of all, David was a shepherd, right? David, we're, we taught, was a shepherd. What is the identity of a shepherd? Why would this be such a powerful image for the Holy One, for the one who is the most powerful, blowing the wind and opening the door? So what does a shepherd do that's so significant? And we see this throughout Jewish liturgy, by the way, and Christian liturgy. Jesus is seen as a shepherd in Christian tradition. So a shepherd is somebody who takes care of their flock. A shepherd is somebody we're told, Moshe, who else in the Bible is a shepherd? Famously, of course, Moshe becomes a shepherd who uh, when Moshe is working back in Midian for his father-in-law, what is Moshe doing when he finds the burning bush? Moshe is running after a little sheep that got lost. So who is a shepherd? The one who cares about the flock, looks and looks for the one who is lost and runs out, runs, uh, cares about bringing the little one back in. So Adonai Roi, this is a very sensitive, this is not the God of war. This is not the God of judgment. This is not the God of kings, of malchiot, of sovereignty. We have that God. We've talked about that God. This is a very soft image. Firm, a good shepherd is firm, but loving and caring and taking care of a flock. So this start, this psalm starts out with an image of a relationship that's first of all personal, and we've talked about structure of sentences, that here it's row e, that e ending is me. It's not theoretical. It's not abstract. It's not um, off in the distance. It's very immediate. When something's in the personal in the Hebrew, it's very personal. And if we would write the comma here or the uh, semicolon, it would come after roi. So if we are looking at the at the parallelism, it's yud hey vav hey Hashem, Havaya, whatever word we're going to use is my shepherd. Pause. What's the other half of the biblical parallelism here? Lo echsar. So this we could spend. Believe me. Uh, a month on this pasuk, on this verse. yud heh vav heh ro the Lord is classically called, is the, we all know the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, is how it's the King James version, which is, I still think is very beautiful. But echsar can also mean, um, what does chasar or chaser mean? Yael or Ben? Chasar, chaser, what is the well, I it's a, it's a lack of it's a, a void. So I will not have a void. I will I not will miss see. anything. I will not want for anything. So it doesn't mean that you would exactly have all the material needs you need. It doesn't necessarily mean material, which is sometimes how it's translated. But I shall not lack for something because somehow the fullness is there. Again, we don't have enough. I could, as I said, this, we could spend a lot. I'm just doing a little things. We'll come back to this in six months or so. But then, so six lines, folks, this is what's amazing about this sum. Starts out right away. I, I am, my relationship with yud heh vav -Hey is so deep. I feel so taken care of. I am so at peace. I don't have wants that I need to fill. And it goes on to line two. I'm going to have to go a little bit faster here. Okay. Benot desha yarbitseni almei menuchot yanhaleni. Let's look at how we translated it at CBST. If you can um, 
Harold, if you right. could. I will English. do that. Now, here's where we made a decision that now that you're becoming some experts, you might disagree with, but we were making it for people less, less fluent than all of you. We decided to remove the gendered relationship uh, mention of God because we didn't want it to be an obstacle. So we did what's a little bit of a cheating thing to do, but we wanted people to experience the psalm. The, this part of the psalm goes into, uh, if you look at the Hebrew of this, it's hard to look at both at the same time, right? Uh, so, benot desha, you lie me down in green pastures. Almei menuchat yanaleni. Then it says, nafshi yeshovev, my, my soul, but it ends the verse with saying, Laman Shemo, on the sake of your of his name, quite literally. But we change it to your names because we want to remove the obstacle that an English reader would have to gendered names of God. But looking at this is lines two and three. Now, right, is it two and three? I just want to make sure I have the right numbers on them. I'm looking at my so line two is Benot Desha Yarbitseni Al Menuchot Yanhaleni. In lush pastures, okay, we changed it to you. You lie me down in green pastures. You lead me besides, uh, besides restful waters. I don't think you could find something more bucolic than this line, right? I mean, we don't need to spend, a, we can't spend a lot of time, but green pastures means luscious life, not dried out, not desolate, not um, parched, right? Green pastures that have waters. Who would not like to lie down in this place, right? On something beautiful and green and full of life and listening to the little brook next door. You know what I mean? Isn't that just like an idyllic image? Peaceful. And so verse three, nafshi, my soul, Yeshovev, again, we've played with the gender here in the English, but we're not going to spend too much time on that. You restore my soul. You guide me on the path of truth, for such is your name. So these first three lines are of profound peace. A sense of, I've got this. I've learned how to create calm in the midst of chaos. I have quietness, I have quietude as we call it. I am, I can meditate in the middle of whatever chaos exists and I am in great comfort. Everybody following me? we got that feeling of this Psalm here. And then we come to that fulcrum verse, which I've pointed to you, pointed out and many times exists in the architecture of a lot of the Psalms and in Psalm, 23, the first three verses are the greatest description, I think, maybe in Western literature of a sense of peace, of a sense of being at one with the power in the universe. And by the way, you'll notice this is using natural imagery, which you saw a lot in the um, Kabbalah Shabbat Psalms. And we've seen a little bit in some of the Psalms we've read that the natural world is used as a, in, the, in this way, in the place of great calm and of great comfort. And here comes verse four. And by the way, if you notice when Cantor Nimi was singing, the setting changed for verse four very much. And that's often true. I'm no expert and maybe Cantor Nimi and Cantor Hirsch can talk more about this, but watching the sound, whenever you listen to a setting of Psalm 23, watch for verse four. Watch how the first three verses are expressed in music. Um, it's usually, I mean, I think of um, Chichester Psalms, by the way, right? Uh, but we don't have time right now, but Chichester Psalms uses these first few verses with the voice of the boy soprano singing the most, it's so gorgeous. You just, this is peacefulness, right? And then it goes to the Psalm we studied of the uh, anger. So, okay, verse four. Gam kielech, though gam kielech the gates almavet, though I walk through the valley. A gay in Hebrew, although it sounds different to us, gay means valley, and that's a very common Hebrew word. It doesn't have any 
connotations other than to gay, it means a valley. Um, by the way, gay hinam is a valley of, in Jerusalem, which we learned about for those of you who have studied, who have gone to Jerusalem with me. And that gay just is gay hinam, is just, that's a valley. But gay salmavet, very interesting word. Rabbi. Yes, yeah, sorry. The word um, on its own is guy. Guy, correct. And then gay salmavet is the, the <laughs> guy, the valley of. Right, smichut. Right. Or the con in English, we call that construct form where you're where you're making a the construct form where you're in english it doesn't change form as much so it's hard for english speakers but it means when you're changing a noun to being in relationship to the following noun um and in hebrew it changes a lot as you el said so the shadow of death what an amazing word sal it's this is uh what's that word portmanteau uh, two words that are put together is that the right word harold when you put two words yeah. together. Yeah, it can be, yes. So tzal is a shadow, and mavet is death. Like mot, moto, we've, I think we've come across that in some. So, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what does that mean? I mean, just the image is such a powerful image. Though I walk, or even when I What's the King James say? I, yay, though I walk through, the, I love, which I love that. I, I love the King James version of this, by the way. I was tempted to put it in the sea door, but not everybody shares the love of King James uh, that I have. But yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, I love that. Uh, there's King James says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So, um, uh, so though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and this is where the music changes, you can kind of hear the diff, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So this is, um, uh, I'm just, well, we just wanted to get the uh, King James here, for thou art with me, for you are with me. Lo irak gam ki elach begetzal mavet, lo ira ki ata imadi. I will fear no evil because you are with me. Now, going to, we don't have enough time right now, but there's a lot that said, lo ira ra. I will not fear fear. I will not fear evil. Uh, now, again, those letters play with ro e, with ro e, with c, with shepherd. There's a lot of word play in this psalm. Your rod and your staff. Now, I know a lot of people like to see a lot of gay implications in this. Most commentators see this as a very simple thing, meaning the tools of the shepherd, the way that the shepherd gathers the sheep, uh, they comfort me. Hema uh, Yenachamuni. So there's, we've gone in the valley of shadow of death. And then I will repeat to myself, I will fear no evil. You can understand why this psalm is said uh, many times, it's traditionally said during the third meal on Shabbat, by the way, on Shalashudis, and it's said in moments of death, it's said in, we said it in Shiva Minyanim, in funerals, um, you prepare, so uh, the English, the Hebrew, Taruch Lefanai Shulchan, you prepare, Aruch, you, you set up uh, a table for me, Neged Tzorurai, um, in the midst of my adversaries or those who cause me trouble or in the place or the place of my troubles. Again, this could be internal or external. Dishanta Vashem and Roshi. You drench my head with oil. This is like the anointing of somebody that we've seen as a traditional way of, of, uh, that we learned about in Psalm 2. Kosi Rivaya. And of course, uh, the King James, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Also so classic and so famous. What would it mean, Kosi Rivaya? How do we understand? What would, what would it feel like? It goes back to lo echsar, right? There's a balance to it. If I don't want, I feel 
abundance, no matter what my external circumstances are. These are images of a, the experience of abundance. It's not about how much you actually have. It's a matter of how much you understand you have. And then, and then the sound changes in a lot of music here uh, to the verse six. Can you believe this is only six verses? So we've gone up and down and the verse, the final verse is ach tov v'chesed. And I love the surely goodness, which we actually did take from, surely we did take from King James. Surely goodness v'chesed, kindness, yirdefuni will follow me, will come after me, will pursue me. A rodef is a pursuer, will pursue me, uh, call yemei chayai, all the days of my life. And what's the end of this? V'shavti v'veit Adonai le'orech yamim. Now this really, it also echoes what we have in Psalm 27. What is the goal of life? And what do we ask for in Achat Sha'alti? Here it is. I will achieve this sense of being surrounded by holiness, by being in a place of peace, by being with God every day of my life. It won't be about what my material circumstances are. Lo echsar, I shall not want. And kosi rivaya, my cup runs over. I know we don't have much time, but I just wanted to make sure I covered all six verses and then I'd like to just hear any thoughts or comments. All right, standing by. Thank you for that, Rabbi. Okay, I know it was a little, it was a faster than we usually no, 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 do. No, no, no. Also six verses. Um, I think we're we're sort of soaking this in. Okay. Yeah, no hands, no hands. So the setting that we often do at CBST is by Shanker. Oh, there is a sand hand, I think. Carol, you. Carol have Diamond. Up? Carol, if you'd mute yourself. Uh, I wanted to focus on the word he'll beats. He'll beats is usually he he'll bats the auto, you know, I hit him. But here I think it's associated with um, uh, with how you uh, uh, get animals to lie down. You know, Hebrew is very specific. Chavashti. Uh, I mean, for every item, you have a different adjective, really. So I just wanted to point that out. You're um, talking about now in verse uh, two? Yes. Yeah. So this, There's a lot to say about the individual words, for sure. Yes, I just kind of wanted to. Yes, thank you for that. You know, Rabbi, we're, we're almost at time. Yeah. Perhaps we could just end it with your teaching and then have the cantor sing us out. What do you think? Beautiful. Good idea. I'm, I'm going to read Psalm 23, just the King James version all the way through. If you'll indulge, if you won't, if you'll indulge me and then we'll have the cantor sing. Okay. I just, I really do love it. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Cantor. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi lo exar, bin od deshe. Yarbitseni al me menuchot al me menuchot yenachaleni nafshi yeshovev yeshovev. 
Yanheni be magleitzedek, Yanheni be magleitzedek, Leman shemo. Gam ki eilech begeit sal mavet lo irara ki ata imadi shivtecha umishan techa hema yena. Lefanai, Lefanai, Shulchan neged tzorerai, Dishanta vashemen roshi, Kosi revaya, said ir de funi koyeme khayai koyeme khayai ve shavti be We have studied in your memory. May your soul be at rest. Thank you so much, Cantor Nimi. That was just such a beautiful offering of those gorgeous words with that very, 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 very meaningful melody. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and uh, please look in your emails. You should be getting the announcement soon with all the details um, that I referred to earlier. And uh, we're praying for our country and we're praying for the soul of Deborah, and we're praying for all of us. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi.